She dances alone, certain of purpose, sure of step. Few stand secure in her embrace, and many choose to let fortune fall in their own hands. Challenge her fancy, and you fiddle with fate. It's going to be us in Chicago in the, in the Eastern Conference Final, and we're going to beat Chicago to go to the Finals. A playoff matchup most awaited suddenly became abated as the Knicks missed their date with destiny. Chemistry was great, everything was great. Um, we were playing extremely well, but it just didn't happen. While New York watched, Chicago claimed its fifth title. Questions remain, but destiny demands the Knicks path lead through Chicago. Tonight we come to you from the United Center, about a few mile drive west of the Loop in downtown Chicago. And 24,000 plus gathering here for an exciting evening. It is the first matchup of four this season between the New York Knicks and the Chicago Bulls. Good evening everybody, I'm Vern Lundquist along with Doc Rivers. Welcome to the 498th straight sellout of a Bulls game. A special spark no matter the time of the year each time these two teams get together, and this is the first of four. The surprise here a quarter of the way through the season is that they are both struggling just above 500 at this point. And, Doc, it's uh, it's Chicago has won three in a row, but they've still got some major problems on this team. Well, the major problem is Scottie Pippen's not playing, and that is a major problem. They don't know if he's healthy enough to play soon or even if he wants to play. But th the biggest problem with this team is their offense. Last year they scored 103 points a game. And this year, they're only scoring 90. Scottie Pippen's absence is hurt, and they need somebody to fill his role. And that guy has to be Tony Kukoc. He has to be the guy, the other guy for Michael. And if he gets off, then Michael will get off even more. New York above 500, but they're having particular problems on the road, especially against bad teams. For example, they lose by 15 at Philly their last time out. Well, this team just does not get it. And, and that's what Jeff Van Gundy said after the Philadelphia loss. The problem is he took the blame, and he shouldn't have. This team has the ability to play on and off, on against good teams, off against bad teams, and that's something they shouldn't do, and that's what's gotten them in trouble. It doesn't matter, though, because these two teams hate each other. Chicago hates the, the, uh, the Knicks. The Knicks hate Chicago. The coaches hate each other. The players hate each other. The cities hate each other, and that's why this is a holiday game. Now, holiday I hear the street. strains of Merry Christmas in the background. Settle back. There's a special spark every time these two get together. And it'll be here at the United Center tonight. The summer in Chicago. That means three things. It's freezing, the Bears are in last place, and the Knicks, Knicks are full. full. Coming up next on TNT. Center. And the New York Knicks come to town with Allen Houston, Charlie Ward in the backcourt, Chris Mills, Patrick Ewing, and Charles Oakley in the front. Larry Johnson will miss his seventh consecutive game tonight with a severe ankle injury. And Chicago counters with Ron Harper and Michael Jordan in the back, Tony Kukoc, Luke Longley, and Dennis Rodman up front. Let's check in right now with Ryan Burwell. Thank you, Vern. And as Doc so eloquently stated earlier, everybody in this rivalry hates each other, including the coaches. But Phil Jackson and uh, Jeff Van Gundy do it with a lot of humor. Now, when we talk to Jackson yesterday, he was talking to him about what he thought about the uh, I've done everything wrong speech by Jeff Van Gundy. He said, well, you know, he should blame himself. And then he kind of smiled so you weren't really sure whether he was joking or dead serious. And Van Gundy, who loves to sarcastically call Jackson Big Chief Triangle, smiled today and said, you know, I always admired this guy's wit and his intelligence. But, you know, he didn't go to an Ivy League school like I did. He went to North Dakota. And on that, Vern, I think we owe the people of North Dakota a little bit of an apology. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Let the games begin, Brian. Yes. we got to teach Jeff how to keep the gum in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Jeff Van Gundy, who uh, began his collegiate basketball career and academic career at Yale, then transferred because he wasn't getting any playing time with the Menlo Community College, a junior college in California. Finally back east for the State University of New York at Brockport, where he played for his dad, Bill. Dad was fired, so he wound up at Nazareth. He had a uh, a well-traveled collegiate career. Yeah, that's why him and John Starks get along so well. 
Patrick Ewing will jump center against Luke Longley. The officiating crew tonight, Joe Crawford, Derek Stafford, and Scott Wall. And Charles Oakley takes it for New York. They come in having lost their last four in a row on the road. They are two and four in the absence of Larry Johnson. Here's Allen Houston, guarded by Michael Jordan. Right side to Chris Mills, and Ewing picked up defensively by Luke Longley. In and out, the rebound in the hands of Kukoc. And they really want to establish Patrick Ewing. He struggled his last three games in a row. They want to get him off, get his confidence going early. They know there's no one on Chicago that can guard him. Left side, it comes to Ron Harper, who looks inside for Michael Jordan. Allen Houston guards him for the moment. Jordan, who needs seven to become the third all-time scorer in NBA history. And he had only 13 in a win here Friday night against Milwaukee. That first basket of the night was scored by Allen Houston. Yeah, and Allen Houston is starting to pick his game up some. He's been inconsistent. He has a wrist injury. It's still not 100%, but he told me before the game, I need to start taking more shots, even if they're bad shots, just to get into a rhythm. Kuko off the dribble, battle for it. Oakley saves it, takes it away. Into the hands of Chris Mills with Longley back, and Mills loses control, but it was touched last by Ron Harper. And Oakley with a nice job of saving the errant ball. Chris Mills told me he's really struggling starting. He, you know, Larry Johnson is not playing. They're two and six since uh, two and four with Larry Johnson out. And Mills said he likes playing with the second unit because they run more. Ball taken away by Dennis Rodman. And here's Kukoc. Jordan gets it back to Rodman, takes the jump. Michael not hitting well. He's shooting 43% for the season. And he was 4 of 16 in that win over Milwaukee here on Friday. And that's totally unusual for Michael Jordan. As many shots as he takes, he still usually stays between the 48 to 52% range, which is unbelievable shooting. Nice job defensively by Ron Harper, but it goes out of bounds before he can retrieve it. Chris Mills will inbound. Yep. Ewing thought he traveled. I saw an interview with Grant Hill. He said, did you see read that? Yes. Grant Hill of Detroit said Patrick Ewing walks every time. He said, I'm not not just occasionally, every time. Well, obviously they read it also. <laughs> the referees, because they just caught it. I disagree with Grant, respectfully, uh, but he does walk a lot. <laughs> That's how he stays trim. Here's Mills. Kukos back. Mills in the lane. Reverse up and under is good. Mills is really a complimentary player. He's not a star, and that needs to be noted because when he was brought here, people looked at him as the next star coming in here uh, for the Knicks, and he's not that. He's a guy that will help you win basketball games. Nice play by Ron Harper for the basket, and he draws the foul. Will go to the free throw line. And watch, yeah, take a look at Ron Harper. He's a slasher. People forget about his days in Cleveland. That's a hard foul also, as you can see at the end. But he's really a slasher. You get him cutting to the basket, he's going to get a lot of points for you. Here is another area in which Chicago has been deficient. They've been horrid at the free throw line. Harper does get this one as a team. The Bulls, 66%. Yeah, and they've never been a good free throw shooting team. But this year, everyone's down. And, and I, I really believe that's concentration. Not just from the free throw line, just throughout the whole season. They've had a lot of distractions so far. Charlie Ward gets the back rim. Offensive board for Ewing. Nice turnaround. And he is fouled by Longley. So Pat, I believe that's where it is. Now, I'll tell you what it is. It's Charles Oakley and Dennis Rodman. And they started it on the other end on the free throw line. And now they're going back at it again. So double foul call. Rodman and Oakley. That's the second quick foul on Charles Oakley. Let's take a look. And you can see him down here low. Now, it started to play before on the free throw line. And uh, Oakley threw Dennis down to the ground. Now, let's take a look here. See, that's not much. Well, maybe it is, but uh, it's what people watch these guys play, and they're going to watch them closely tonight. Rebound taken by Chris Mills off the missed Ron Harper shot. Left side to Allen Houston. And 
Harper gets in the way, causing the shot to be altered. And that was an ugly fast break. <laughs> wow. Rebounding edge to New York early on. Offensive foul. See, and you can see these two teams are already burned. They both get in your way. Uh, they're one and two in field goal percentage opponents, field goal percentage. And you look at what they do. They run in your way. They get in your way. They don't let you run your offense. And that's happening already. Foul is called on Buck Williams, who had just come on the floor. His first. 8.45 to go first quarter. Harper kicks it out to two coach for three. He's warming up. And if he continues to warm up and Scotty Pippen comes back, watch out, Lee. Good coach, one of the few hitting from downtown. He's at 44% for the year. And Chicago up by two. Rebound, Michael Jordan. Jordan guarded by Allen Houston. Taken away. Here comes Chris Mills. Harper back. Two on one. Charlie Ward protects the ball nicely and gets the basket. 6-6 six, six ball game. Eight minutes to go in the opening quarter. Bulls just completed a seven-game road trip. They won their last two on that trip. Here's Longley in and out. At Washington and at Boston, Jordan misses again. Then they came home and won ugly against Milwaukee here on Friday night. So they uh, have a season record of... 11 and 7. Let's go back and take a look at Kukoc. And, and spacing is so important right now. You watch Tony Kukoc here, and look how the floor is spaced. The penetration is what causes, and this is what Scottie Pippen does. He penetrates, he kicks. Tony Kukoc gets a wide open three. That's what they need. I am doing as bad a job with a team as you can possibly do because we do not get it. We have good guys. So uh, the blame is not on them. The blame is right here, and I, I am, uh, I am disgraced with myself right now. And I have done a poor, poor coaching job with more than enough talent in that locker room. That's a poor, 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 poor coaching job. No, he deserves the blame. He should take that blame. No doubt about it. <laughs> you get the idea. Jeff Van Gundy was two steps away from crisis counseling. Boy, I tell you, I'm disgraced with myself. Wow. Well, that was after the loss in Philadelphia by 15. Yeah. And they had also lost to Dallas on the road by an equal number. Here's Jordan with his first basket of the night. Yeah, that's called coaching. That's what Jeff Van Gundy is doing. He's trying to put himself on the line to get his players to play back. Basket at the other end ties it up at eight. Now here's Jordan guarded by Allen Houston. Michael, that poor shooting night against Milwaukee, 4 of 16. Here's Luke Longley for two, no. And the rebound from Houston. Jordan had only five points at the end of three quarters in that one. Here's Houston. And Allen Houston cans another. I think the Knicks are a better team when he does things like that. He's a great guy with the ball in his hand, breaking defense down and getting shots. And it's an easy way for them to score points. He's ha he has to do that more for the Knicks to be a good basketball team. Jordan, hmm. seen that before. Yeah, and that's why they're a good basketball team because he does he does it more. He's pretty good. <laughs> Still. Yeah. 10-10. Jordan with four. Ewing, guarded by Longley. Five on the shot clock. Patrick Ewing fills it up to give New York another two-point edge. These two teams come in having played each other 150 times in regular season. Here's Jordan. Six points. And he is one away from moving into the third spot all-time NBA scores. And you can see his game plan tonight. He wants to put it up. Well, you predicted that, Doc, after it. So did Jeff Van Gundy, as a matter of fact, after that poor shooting night the other night. Well, when you factor in, they're playing the Knicks. <laughs> and he scored 13 points. He's going to score some points tonight. I mean, they, you can't teach this. this. This is something that very few people can do, and probably only one, and he just shot the basketball. 
I want to show you some defense here, Vern, by this guy, Tony Kukoc. I mean, the first look at that never turns his back. Wow. The first thing they teach you, uh, well, in the States, <laughs> is that you should always see the basketball. I'm trying to teach my son that right now. And if he watched that, he said, Daddy, he didn't do it. That's a Croatian thing. <laughs> yeah, it must be. Let's check in with Brian Boy, Burwell. You know, that was a great illustration of exactly what Phil Jackson was getting on Kukoc about on the previous time out. He said, your back was turned. You're not paying attention. He says, just look at that. You're, you're just not paying attention. Uh, and, of course, Tony immediately reacted by not reacting at all. Back to you guys. All right, Brian. He's After a good listener, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Buck Williams. Charlie Ward, screen set by Patrick Ewing. Pick and roll. Ewing up and under and draws the foul. Luke Longley called for the infraction, and Ewing goes to the free throw line. Scotty Pippen on the bench. It was in Sacramento a couple of weeks ago where he said he did not want to come back and play for this team once he was off the injured list in January. His uh, coach and his teammate and colleague Michael Jordan both criticized him. Yeah, they did. And you don't know what's up with the Bulls. You don't know if this is a, a, a little scheme that they've all thought up. Uh, the bottom line is I think Scotty Pippen's coming back. And I think they want one more shot at this title. And I think they deserve it. I hope personally that they're all together. I want to see them go after it again and someone try to beat them. Pippen, of course, on the injured list all season because of foot surgery. The injury first sustained in June. The surgery took place in October. Rodman wide open underneath. And they finally saw him or decided to throw him the ball. He was open for, he had to get out of the three-second zone because he was in there. He had to get out and no one still guarded him. He was open for 10 seconds. And no one wanted to throw him the ball. No, that's, <laughs> that's a concern. 14-13, <laughs> nearing the five in the mark of the opening quarter. Nice pass underneath. Buck Williams is fouled. Watch Rodman waiting for the pass. I mean, if that's not wide open, I don't know what wide open is. And look at him. <laughs> wow. The Knicks were not going to help. They were going to let him get the ball. Maybe that's their game plan tonight. <laughs> Buck Williams gets the first. Buck Williams, who was almost the odd man out the first uh, 10 games or so, but with Larry Johnson down, he is playing much, much more. Well, he was out of the rotation, and it was killing Jeff Van Gundy. He told us, I have a Hall of Famer sitting on the bench, and it really bothers me because he plays so hard, he works so hard. Buck took it well. He said he's not happy with it, but I'm going to keep working, and I'm going to put myself back in the lineup. Maybe with Larry's injury and the way Buck's playing, he might have done that. Saw a brief glimpse of Larry Johnson on the bench. They think they might get him back from the ankle sprain next week. Kukoc for three. Second of the ball game. Well, I really think he's starting to get into a group. And he's a dangerous basketball player. I don't think he's ever been comfortable playing with Scotty and Michael. Uh, maybe this is the time he will get it. If he does, the Bulls are very good. Charlie Ward finds Buck Williams, who goes up for the shot. Loose ball. Knicks got it. And they find Patrick Ewing. Rodman goes up for the rebound. Loose ball foul is called. And they got Buck Williams. Tony Kukoc uh, with a team struggling offensively. See what happens when he does not get his average. Well, Michael can't do it all. Scotty's not playing, so you need one more guy who can not only score but get his own shot. And Kukoc is the only other guy. Four minutes to go. Up and under. Jordan Tumor, and he is now the third all-time scorer in NBA history. Yeah, I, I just, you can almost feel it that he's in for one of those nights. Started 0 for 3, and he's hit his last four shots. 19-15, a four-point lead. Houston, quick release. No, Rodman rebound. Rodman had that uh, typically unusual start to the season. He showed up for one game late, but uh, the last three weeks or so, He's played, uh, played well and quietly. See, I think this team is coming on. Even without Scotty right now, they're coming on. They lost a closer than Seattle, and they played great since. 
Charlie Ward, not sure what he had in mind there. Take a look at the shot to put Michael Jordan in the third all-time. Well, it's a vintage Michael Jordan since coming back from retirement. That's the applause in the background as the public address system acknowledges the accomplishment. And Michael's walking around like he didn't even know that he doesn't know why they're cheering. What a bet he does. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Chamberlain, Jabbar, and Jabbar and Chamberlain, and two more. A 7 nothing run now, keyed by Jordan. And time is called with 2.52 to go to the opening quarter as Michael Jordan and the Bulls have jumped out to a six-point lead. Two thumbs up. 39 minutes per game. Next most of the team is Rodman with 32. Yeah, and you think at age you should go the other way. He's going up, and he's not tired. The guy loves playing basketball. He loves being on the court. But, but he's chasing worry. another record uh, as well. We talked about the, the scoring mark. Uh, he has now scored in double figures in 777 consecutive games. That's 10 away from tying the all-time mark held by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. That's pretty awesome when you're talking about a guard. Mills traveling. As a matter of fact, Vern, I think that's remarkable. Yeah. You're, you're talking about a guard. Big man, you know, Jabbar and Chamberlain was, is probably second. That's amazing. 777. Double figures. Michael said he really wasn't aware of it until the start of the fourth quarter. They said, you've only got five. So he scored the next eight points. <laughs> yeah. Click. <laughs> <laughs> Rebound in the hands of Chris Mills. 2.20 to go in the opening quarter. A six-point Chicago lead. Patrick Ewing. Guarded by Longley. Three bulls around, and Longley comes down with it. Yeah, and Luke Longley did a great job. He just stayed in front of Patrick Ewing, and that's what they want him to do. Michael Jordan, Houston. Cheats and gives him the left lane. That one thrown away. Watch Longley on Ewing, Doc. I mean, all they want him to do, Luke Longley, is stay in front of Ewing, and he did it and challenged the shot. That's all you want Luke Longley to do. John Starks makes his first appearance in the game and gets the ball from Charlie Ward, guarded by Jordan. Mills on the curl. Rebound, tip. Ewing, no. Longley has it for Chicago. 90 seconds to go first quarter. See, I want to make a point. Allen Houston came in. He took two quick shots. He made them, missed one, and never shot the ball again. Jordan, on the other hand, <laughs> he just keeps going. 12 for Jordan and an eight-point lead. New York has missed its last six shots. Double comes from Jordan on Ewing. Starts. Charlie Ward backs up for three. Got it! Boy, that's a big shot, and that was one heck of a fake. Charlie Ward with a three-pointer to cut the lead to five as we enter the final 50 seconds. Ron Harper. Ball on the floor. Harper has it. Jordan. Two coach wants it, gets it, puts it up. Oh. Bill Jackson. <laughs> and look at the pass first by Ron Hopper to Michael Jordan. That is a great shot. But then look at the passing. Perimeter passing, perimeter penetration, kick to Tony Kukoc, who I would say Vern is on a row. Three threes for Kukoc here in the first quarter. Rodman called for a foul while we were in replay. That's his second. And substitutions also made. Chris Childs comes on to replace Charlie Ward for New York. And Randy Brown is on for the Chicago Bulls. So also is Jason Caffey. Here's Childs. Childs. 
Starks, screen from Ewing, pick and roll. They got him for palming the ball. So we've seen a travel and a palming already in this game. Might want to note the date. <laughs> yes. Final 20, 26-18. Kukoc, three threes, first quarter. Jason Cappy. Ewing was there defensively and gets called for the foul. But everything is called so far for the Bulls. They put the ball on the floor, they kick, and the next guy puts it on the floor. That's exactly how they got that last shot. Jason Cappy goes to the free throw line. Steve Kerr, who was just activated today, having missed the last 10 games with a bone bruise behind his left knee, comes on the floor. Tomorrow night on TBS, the Lakers against the Warriors. On Friday, Miami at Indiana on the next Tuesday, Doc and I will be in New York for the Pistons in the mix. And usually that Lakers-Warriors game would have no interest, but it will tomorrow night. <laughs> Michael Jordan, number three all-time scorer in the history of the NBA. He gets 12 first quarter points and propels the Chicago Bulls to a 26-18 lead at the end of one. It is a beautiful city any time of the year, but particularly so during the holiday season. We are in Chicago, Illinois. The Bulls and New York Knicks game one, and we're not too far from Michigan Avenue and a hometown uh, home game for you. Yeah, this back. is. This is where I grew up, Chicago, and I played for the Knicks. So, and we talked about the hatred. When I went home for our family reunion, they booed me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> somehow I don't yeah. quite think so. Doc played at Proviso East. It's about four miles that way. And uh, impressions of the first quarter. Well, it's been great play. I think the, the Knicks have struggled offensively, but I think that's due to the Bulls' defense. You know, we talk about the hatred of the two cities. Last night, I was telling you, getting the elevator with Patrick Ewing with about 20 ladies over the age of 80 or 90, and they looked at Ewing, and one of the older ladies said, the enemy is here. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick laughed. Here's Ron Harper. Jason Caffey is guarded by Charles Oakley, and Caffey hits the jumper. He's another guy that's getting a lot of interest in the league right now. A lot of guys are looking at him as a guy possibly they could trade for also. People think that he could be a really big-time scorer in this league if he was away from the ball. Starts. Rebound, Randy Brown, another Chicago native. Randy Brown finds Ron Harper. Largest lead of the game now at double digits for the first time. The lead is 10. Kerr. Ron Harper. And Randy Brown picked up by Chris Childs. You see, I think a lot of people aren't talking about the absence of Pippen, and I think it hurts more with bench play because then Tony Kukoc would be on the floor. But now he starts with Michael. You have to rest them both. Neither one of them's on the floor, along with Scotty Pippen down on the floor, and they have to create points some, somehow out of the bench, and that's what Jason Caffey tries to do. New York having shooting problems. Starks missed that one. They're one of five for three-point range, the one by Charlie Ward. Here's Caffey. Two on the shot clock. Out of bounds. And let's take a look at Caffey a moment ago. I mean, he's really an undersized power forward, but he has such quickness. You can see here, I mean, nice shot, turn around, can move, can put it on the floor. He's a good guy to have on your team scoring points and, and just playing powerful defense. Shot clock violation for the Bulls. Well, you can look right now. Phil Jackson is saying, wait a minute, you're our scorer. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but Tony Kukoc is on the bench, Michael's on the bench, and you look at the Bulls, who's going to score for him right now? Here's Chris Childs. Kicks it back outside to Oakley, who takes the jump from 18. No. New York is now one of its last 11. Yeah, and Oakley should have passed that one to John Starks. He was wide open on that last one. Chicago at 55%. They have not shot the ball well this season, as we mentioned. There's a team right at 43% of the season. 
Ten point lead right now. Oakley underneath. Chris Dudley, who's come on, and the rebound goes in the hands of Oakley, who puts it off the glass and in. That's the lead to eight, 28 20. Steve Kerr, Jason Cappy, there's Dudley. Offensive foul. And that's a good call. Cappy never saw Dudley rotate. When he saw him, it was too late. It was almost a reaction. He just threw that arm out. You can see John Starks going for the steal, and right at the last, you can see that law, that arm going out. Never saw Dudley until it was too late. Giles Starks, Allen Houston, muscled by Ron Harper. In the lane, great defensive job by Harper. Kerr, Allen Houston guards him. 9.20 to go first half. Kerr, right side. Cappy, got it. Well, that's the guy they, they have to go to, and they are. Giles and Oakley, Dudley, Starks, Allen Houston for New York. Rodman, Brown, Kerr, Harper, and Cappy. Allie, you nice. Starks finds Allen Houston. Yeah, that was great eye-to-eye -eye contact by Starks and Houston. Lead back to eight at 8.45 first half. Try the backdoor cut. Cappy has Dudley guards him. Five on the shot clock. Good job defensively again by Dudley. At the buzzer, another shot clock violation. And Randy Brown and Chris Childs uh, embracing each other. Yeah. They're having a little battle of who's the toughest, shortest guy right now. And no one's paying attention. <laughs> Watch Harper on Starks a moment ago. Yeah, you, you see this here. Ron Harper, everyone talked about his offense early in his career. Now everyone's talking about his defense. And then you look back on the other end, you see Dudley repaying the favor and another 24-second violation. And a double technical has now been called against Chris Childs and Randy Brown. You know, a good sign is when you can pick up a lot of talking and you can hear it defensively. You can hear guys talking, and that's due to these two great defensive teams playing against each other. Go back and watch the Starks pass. Yeah, and you can't see Allen Houston, but Allen Houston looked at him first. Stark saw it and threw it. However, New York just threw it away again. 30-22 with 8-10 to go in the first half. Harper gives it back to Randy Brown. And Brown takes the jumper. No. Rodman tips it, tries to keep it in play. Foul on Steve Kerr. And Randy Brown's shot was caused by the little argument he had with Childs. He wanted to show him. Yeah, Steve Kerr has carved out a nice niche for himself in his NBA career. Coming off of a knee injury, one of the great three-point shooters in the game. A career average of 48%. Yeah, but he does more. I mean, he really is a good free-throw shooter, but he's a solid defender. That's something no one thought he could ever be in this league, and he is. And he makes clutch shots, as he did last year in the Utah series. Jeff Van Gundy was talking about his uh, collegiate career at Nazareth College. He said, people forget I was a 10.9 scorer <laughs> yeah. my senior year. He said... Ah, that was a Steve Kerr without the ability to shoot. 30-22. <laughs> There's Kerr on the floor defensively. Kathy picks it up. Here's Harper. Brown to the right side. Harper will take the shot. And the rebound. And right now, the Bulls are getting to every loose ball, and they're playing more physical than the Knicks. Chicago, all but unbeatable at home. They lost two here last year. Here's Starks, yes. They have lost one here at the United Center this year. It was to the Washington Wizards. But they are 6-1 and one coming in. Now watch Steve Kerr hit the floor. And this is, again, great defense by Steve Kerr. What we talked about, this is just a good guess by Steve Kerr. He's a goaltender.
15 of their next 21 games on the road beginning tonight in Atlanta at Georgia Tech against the Hawks. Jamal Mashburn knocking down a three, the Heat number two in the league in three-point accuracy and up by 10 at the break over the Hawks, 47-37. They're second in the league behind the Clippers in three-point percentage. Just thought you might want to know that. Doc Rivers old team. Let's go back to Chicago. Behind the Clippers, EJ. Good factoid. Yeah, that is. Pretty impressive. Miami 8-2 and two in the last 10. And uh, they lead the Eastern Conference with that scoring average of right at 101 points per game. <laughs> and Riley really doesn't like that. He wants to lead <laughs> the defensive categories. Bill Winnington on and gets the quick basket right off the bench. Yeah, and I'll say this about Pat Riley. I don't know if there's ever been coach a year twice in a row, uh, but he should be it at this point of the season so far. Amazing without Alonzo Mourning what they've done. Miami, of course, leading the Atlantic Division. New York finds itself third, tied for third, behind uh, Miami and Orlando. And Atlanta leading Cleveland and Chicago in the central division. And Mike Fratello has the Cavs playing pretty good basketball also. I will never, never thought I'd say this after playing for Mike for eight years, but they're running the basketball. <laughs> Oakley with the steal, and it gives New York they're hitting 37% in the first half, and Patrick Ewing getting ready to come back in. Ten-point margin underneath the double. Scott Burrell with the defensive job there, number 24. They're helping on every play. Both teams do this well, and we're going to be saying talking defense all night. But again, great help defense by the Bulls. 6.07 to go first half. Starks. Got it. Now let's check the lineups. Michael Jordan back on the uh, floor now with Rodman, Randy Brown, Scott Burrell, and Bill Wennington for Chicago. Childs and Ward, along with Starks, are the three guard set for Jeff Van Gundy. And they're going to go to the post if they can get it to Michael with the small lineup. Back to Rodman. Are you kidding me? Well, yeah, he was. <laughs> I'm sure that's the shot they wanted. Ewing. No, no. Burrell rebound. 34-26, 5-22 to go. Ewing won for six tonight. And he came off a poor effort in the loss at Philly over the weekend. Good penetration. Yeah, nice penetration and something interesting. Jordan got the ball on the post and they double teamed him with Patrick Ewing. Van Gundy does not like double teaming a lot. Brown uh, lets the goggles go, looks at the bench. The goggles have been retrieved, I would imagine, in a cracked condition. Yeah, when he went to the floor, he went to the floor hard and he was sent down there by Patrick Ewing. Well, whether you can see or not, you can penetrate. <laughs> yes. With goggles and sans goggles. Let's take a look at where he lost the goggles. Well, it will be on the drive, and you'll see Patrick Ewing at the very end right there help him go down to the floor, and that hurt. But does he stop? This is why he's still in his lead, because he's tenacious. Third foul on Oakley. We see, and we're talking about the Knicks right now struggling in the effort department where the effort guy has been in foul trouble all game and that's Charles Oakley so the guy who has to do it for them now will be Chris Dudley Randy Brown with a three-point play and a 39 28 lead now with 438 to go first half Brown picks up Charlie Ward Dudley back on Ewing tries to establish position Wellington does a pretty good job of denying him that now the double team comes from Burrell, and he's doubly underneath. Will not go, Wennington looks for the outlet pass, settles for Randy Brown. The Bulls' defense right now are taking the Knicks out of every offensive set. Jordan doesn't get the bounce. Starks for three. Dudley on the line when he grabs the rebound. And Jeff Van Gundy wants to chat with his team. 
Yeah, and you can see at the bottom before we go to the timeout what Chris Childs, a smaller guy guarding Michael Jordan, he's face guarding him. He's just, just going to try to deny the basketball from Jordan. And that's a pretty good idea because if he can't catch it, it's really tough for him to score. Chicago leads by 11. He is brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By the Michael Jordan Collection from Haynes. And by AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. Take a look at the Eastern Conference standings coming into play tonight. Atlanta with that wonderful start, still at 15-3, though trailing Miami tonight. But down in the middle of the pack for the playoffs, if they, you know, the old proverbial, if they were to begin tomorrow. Yeah. Chicago at 11-7 and, and New York in uh, a tie at the bottom of the playoff position with 11-8. and eight. And you look at that, the, the Eastern Conference is really interesting. I don't think there's an overpowering team. Maybe Chicago, if they're all healthy, we don't know that yet. But everyone's good in the East. Milwaukee has an excellent shot of making the playoff. Cleveland, I think, right now is a surprise team. And I would put out a warning right now watch out for Indiana mm -hmm. I think Larry Bird has that team in the right direction last night the first time this season a team have scored over 100 points against them. we have under four to go first half 39 28 here pick supplied by Wennington they kick it out to Randy Brown and the goggles have been fixed but the shot is off the front rim Chris Childs back to Ewing, guarded by Tuco, Jan Fowler. I tell you what, right now the Knicks are struggling offensively, shooting 35% for the game, six for the last 23, and the Bulls are at five at 50% shooting. So that tells you the difference of the game right now. If you look at the score, it's an 11-point lead by the Bulls. Patrick Ewing at the free throw line. Uh, I mean, the second was worse than the first. Yeah, and the first was bad. <laughs> so the second one was real bad. Not much uh, activity at the free throw line tonight. Well, that worries Jeff Van Gundy. He says, right now, my team, they're taking too many jump shots, and that just is not the one and the two. You sung about one, two, three, four, and five are all taking jumpers. He needs somebody to create some fouls. Two goes guarded by Dudley. Ward comes to help. They kick it out to Burrell and find Jordan. And it's swatted away by Chris Childs and picked up by John Stark. Childs is doing a real nice job on Jordan right now. Ewing, the double team, goes up and in. And that's what Ben Gundy wants. He wants him to push the ball up the court, get it in the Ewing, and make the defense react. Patrick now two for seven from the field. 22nd timeout called by Chicago. See, you like this when New York runs. They push it up. They get into the offense early, and you go. You make them double-team. They double-team, but Patrick Ewing scored anyway. Uh, Van Gundy talking about the, uh, the, the the number of jumpers that they are taking, and he agrees with you that uh, they're taking too many. Yeah, they are. I mean, you have guys who can put it on the floor. Allen Houston's a guy that can put it on the floor. Chris Childs is another guy. One thing he said we should not minimize is losing Larry Johnson. He said Larry Johnson made their second unit really good. They can't run as much when he's not on the court. He was the key guy for the second unit. He said right now we don't have a post presence in the second unit. Had to get Larry Johnson probably will be ready to go next week. The Knicks go back home for three in a row after tonight's game. That one knocked out of bounds. Allen Houston back on the floor, replacing John Starks. Childs, Houston, Ewing. Chris Dudley, as Oakley sits with three fouls, and Charlie Ward. 39-30, Ewing. Burrell saves the rebound. Michael Jordan. Well, I tell you what, he's really having a trouble with the basketball, and I think a lot of it is caused by Chris Childs right now. Steve Kerr getting ready to make a reappearance for Chicago. Good coach passes on the three, finds Burrell for three. No. Yeah, he, he should have shot the first time. If you don't shoot the first time, you're not miss, making it the second time. 
Coming up tomorrow night in the Bay Area, there's been a lot of attention focused on Golden State. Latrell Sprewell with a press conference today. Tomorrow night, the Lakers take on Golden State on TBS, followed yeah. by Inside the NBA. Too much attention been paid, and uh, I think Golden State is going to really have a tough time pulling any type of season together, the way things have happened there so far. Ball taken away by Winnington on the penetration. Here's Jordan. To Kerr, spots up for three, takes it. Oh, wow. I don't know if that was blocked. Wow. Steve Kerr. Chicago is four of five from long range tonight. Ewing, tough shot. Tip won't go for Dudley, but he gets his own follow. And another offensive board for Charlie Ward. They'll bring it back and try it again. Ball taken away by Jordan on the attempted entry pass from Childs. Jordan. 14 point lead. Largest of the night. And timeout called by the New York Knicks. Steve Kerr back in action, having missed 10 games with a bone bruise in the knee, is now a perfect 7 of 7 for the year. I want you to take a look at Bill Winnington right here, playing a great defense on Patrick Ewing. First, he meets him right here and then he pushes them out. Now, this is where Patrick Ewan wants to catch the ball. A couple of inches or a foot makes a huge difference. He forces Patrick Ewing into a tough shot about a foot to two longer than he wanted to take, and that's great job. Defense right now by the Bulls. Well, the Knicks first in points allowed and first in field goal percentage, but look who's second in both. Chicago, and tonight they have denied New York New York is seven of its last 27 over a 16-minute span. And that's why I tell people don't count Chicago out because of their record. They're still great defensively without probably the best defensive player in the league being injured in Scotty Pippen. And when he comes back, he automatically gets them all fixed. There's an example of a defense as well, Doc. Shot clock violation. Coming up at halftime, the Nike halftime report. Reggie Theus joins... Ernie Johnson in our Atlanta studios. Highlights of the Hawks heat game and uh, a report from Craig Sager on the Latrell Sprewell press conference out of the Bay Area. 14 point lead here, final 50 seconds of the first half. And I heard Reggie Theus talking about uh, his coach Kevin Lockery and, and he almost went at it with Lockery. I think that was a wise decision. I think Kevin Lockery's tougher. <laughs> Jordan, no. Rebound Chris Mills. Back to Charlie Ward. Ewing and Wennington again. Patrick gets this one. Yeah, and that time, he still caught it in the wrong spot, but he got to the right spot and made the jump shot. Ewing now 3 of 10 for the evening, and the lead is 12. Now Houston guarding Jordan. Tony Kukoc, fouled by Chris Mills. New York had a foul to give, and Kukoc is fouled on that play. Well, the low first half, or low, low half for a season this far, 34 points in New York. Chicago held Milwaukee to 62 in the game the other night. Jordan misses at the buzzer. But the Chicago Bulls trying to win their fourth in a row. And it will be their first four-game streak of the season. But very comfortable in the first half. Jordan has 14. The lead is 12. About a Chicago tonight. Nice and toasty inside United Center where the Chicago Bulls lead the New York Knicks by 12. And it's time for our weekly feature. We present to you every halftime. What's up, Doc? What's up, Doc? 
Byrne, what's up is that this may be Michael's last year again. And while he hopes that there's room for one more trophy in his NBA collection, history tells us as few have gone out on top. George Mikan enjoyed great success but failed to win a title in return. And the same is true for Celtic legend Bob Cousy. Of the hundreds in the hall, only five can say that they went out on top. And all were Celtics in the 60s. Most of the greats the game has witnessed have left lasting legacies, but few have left as champions. So Michael, we know you like challenges. This is yours. We wish you the best. Well, I think that's great, and it's <laughs> worth noting that all those guys have aged except for Tommy Heinsohn. <laughs> yeah, it looks the same, huh? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> A couple of pounds. New York, I know you're surprised at the lack of emotion they seem to have played with. Yeah, it seems like they're running around, they're running their cuts, but they're doing it with no emotion. They're flat. Sometimes teams come out flat, and, and there's no answer for that. But against the Bulls, it's tough to see, and I can't believe it's happening. Well, New York trails by 12, and we're going to check in with Brian Burwell. Thank you, Vern, and you know what? Jeff Van Gundy said the exact same thing, Doc. He said, this team is in a funk, and we need Patrick to be more aggressive and to take the big shots when we need him. Also, because of the Bulls' reputation as cold-blooded killers, John Starks told the guys when they were coming out the locker room, the first five minutes are vital. We have to get back in this game in the first five minutes because you know if you don't get in the first five minutes, Michael and the Bulls are going to kill you. Back to you guys. All right, Brian. And Patrick Ewing had a very difficult first half. 3 of 10, 15 touches, double team seven times. Foul twice and only one of four at the free throw line. Yeah, and he's struggling, and I think it's the big guys. The double teams are affecting him some, but Luke Longley and Bill Woodington, they're beating him to the spot, they're pushing him off the post, and they're making him tough, lo take long shots. If he's going to take jumpers and turn around jumpers off the post, he's going to struggle, and that's what the Bulls are trying to make him do. 14 points tonight in the first half for number 23, four of nine against Allen Houston. Scoreless against Charlie Ward and one of one against John Starks. Yeah, well, Michael's going to get his. Uh, there's no stopping him. And the reason it's so tough to stop a guard over a big guy is because it's really tough to double team a guard. Michael Jordan can put the ball on the floor, he can score from whatever. Patrick Jordan is relying on his guards to get him the ball, and they really have to get him the ball deep in the post. Ron Harper, Tony Kukoc, coach, Longley Rodman, and here's Jordan, gets the pass, and will go to the free throw line as. Oakley, that'll be his fourth. And, and so, when, just yeah, like that. Yeah, when it rains, it pours. And that's what, what Oakley is thinking right now. He was just there, and he got that call. Fourth foul on Oakley, and Jordan goes to the free throw line. See, and it's interesting. Right now, Jeff Van Gundy has not made a move. And I, I think what he's saying is the first five minutes is important. We need Charles Oakley in the game. It'll be interesting how long he stays with that decision. He is chatting ever so amiably with Derek Stafford, who made the call. Maybe he doesn't want to sit near these guys anymore. 46-32. <laughs> Houston. See, and it's starting out like the first half. Allen Houston came out, and it looked like he wanted to have a big game. He's got a couple of good buckets, and then he didn't shoot the ball for a while. I think him and Patrick Ewing have to carry this team offensively while they're in the funk, because those are the two guys that can create their own shots. Here's Jordan. He gets a nice screen from Longley. Kicks it out to Kuko. Foul as he attempts the three, and the foul is on Chris Mills. And right now, the key guy for the Bulls, and we talked about Tony Kukoc to open the game, and you can see what he's doing. When he plays well with Michael, they're tough to beat even without Scottie Pippen. Gets his first free throw of the night. One. As we said, this has been uh, dangerous territory for Chicago thus far this season. Jordan's free throw percentage down 12, Kukoc down 11, Longley down 8, and as a team, 
Yeah, and they're, they're all down in all the categories. And again, I think it's concentration. That concentration on the free throw line, they've had so many distractions this year. Things are starting to calm now, and the Bulls are starting to play better. Largest lead of the night at 15 now for Chicago. Houston kicks it back outside, throws it away. 12 turnovers for New York. And that's one thing the Bulls have not done well without Scotty Pippen, the sports turnovers, and they're doing it well tonight. You know, the Knicks have a history of turning the ball over. New York comes in averaging over 17 turnovers per game. And that's loud. When a team that does not run turns the ball over 17 times, that's a ton. Chicago returns the favor. Here's Charlie Ward. Good penetration. Nice play. At the other end, here is Ron Harper. Oakley's back. He's playing with four fouls. I tell you what, he got away with it because he did travel. The entire Nick bench exploded on that play, and they're right. He traveled in front of everybody, even the Bulls. People in the crowd here were signaling travel. Scott Wall called the technical after he did not call the travel. Yeah. And you can see Jeff Van Gundy, he earns his tech. And every single guy on the Knicks bench was up on that play. Jordan shoots the free throw. Charlie Ward is over chatting with uh, Scott Wall, who did not call the travel. Van Gundy picks up the technical, and it's a 16-point margin. Yeah, and I think that technical was more than just a technical. He's trying to do whatever he can to get the juices flowing for this basketball team. Ward guarded by Harper. Patrick Ewing, Rodman has him. But look where Rodman had him and made him catch it. Out where the Bulls emblem is. It's tough to make a shot if you're a big guy posting up from out there. Ewing is 3 of 11. Jordan. Ewing, loose ball. Rodman battles him for it. And it is out of bounds off Rodman. Under 10 minutes to go, third quarter. Knicks losers of their last four in the row trying to find a spot and not getting it. Ewing is 3 of 12. <laughs> oh, wow. You can see. <laughs> Michael said, here, Dennis, you can have that rebound, but give me the ball back. <laughs> <laughs> and Dennis Rodman is having an impact on this game, and he's having it on Charles Oakley. And they just called Oakley for his fifth foul. And what is happening, and we saw it early in the game when they called the double fouls on the two, or the double technical. Dennis Rodman is bothering. He's into, Scott, into Charles Oakley's head with the little games, and that's what he does. And take a look at it here. And you know what? That was Michael Jordan who hit Dennis Rodman. And they caught it on Charles Oakland. And now to compound the difficulty, a technical foul called on Oakley. Oakley feels like he's been picked on right now. You agree? And, and I agree, but I don't think it's on purpose. Let's check in with Brian Burwell. Well, you know, sometimes a look is worth a thousand words. Charles Oakley just stared at Joey Crawford. Joey didn't like it, and he slapped him with the tee. Back to you guys. Uh, Charles Oakley stared at me. I'd do something, too, but I would run. <laughs> <laughs> 9.40 to go, third quarter. This one in danger of slipping away from New York. Now, tomorrow night, spotlight will be in the Bay Area. The Los Angeles Lakers go in to take on Golden State. That's on our sister network, TBS, tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. On Friday night on TNT, Miami goes into Indiana to take on the Pacers. That ought to be a really good ball game. And then a week from tonight, Doc and I will be in New York as the Detroit Pistons, who handed New York a spanking in the first home game yeah. at the Garden this year, come yeah. back. I think that Heat-Pacers game is going to be the most physical game of this season thus far. I think those two teams are going to go at it. Good coach. Allen Houston guards Michael Jordan. And the foul call as Jordan goes into the paint. Well, Dennis Rodman's impact has been 
inside the head of Charles Oakley more than uh, on the floor, would you think? Yeah, it has been. But Dennis Rodman is known for rebounding. He does so many other little things. He sets big picks for guys. He'll throw the nice outlet pass. And just to, he had four rebounds at halftime, and I think he still had a good game. And the fact that Charles Oakley is sitting on the bench with five fouls means Dennis Rodman is having a real nice game. Yeah, we made reference to it in the first half, but Rodman, after showing up here after the Charlotte home game had started and said he was delayed in traffic. <laughs> yeah. With the exception of that little miscue, and there's another New York turnover, Rodman has played uh, quietly in control. That's called incentives in your contract. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, yes. 19-point lead. Longley. Ewing battles for it. Charlie Ward comes out with it. Underneath, nice pass. And a basket from Allen Houston. He can really pass Charlie Ward. And, and I know you want to use a reference of a quarterback, but it's a good reference. He can see the floor. 55-38. Harper and Jordan with the pump fake and the jump. Ewing clears the miss. And you can sense right now the Knicks trying to get in this game and make a run. Ward penetration. Buck Williams misses this layup. Yeah, and that was a wide open layup with another great pass from Ward. Jordan fall away. Williams after the miss for New York. Here comes Ward. Jordan's going to be late getting back. Ward, nice play. Dish Ewing short for the shot. Misses again, but is fouled by Kukoc. And that's two layups in a row missed by the Knicks. And right now, everything being set up by Charlie Ward. Great pass by Ward to Ewing. Wide open layup. Second one, miss in a row, and then he gets fouled on the second effort. This will be uh, Ewing's fifth trip to the free throw line. First of the quarter for New York. Ewing now two of five for the night. And we're talking about Charlie Ward. Jeff Van Gundy told us this morning he's the only player on this team who's having a better year this year than he had last year. Now yeah, that speaks of the malaise for the Knicks right now. Ewing out, stolen by Ward. Here's Ewing at the other end with Rodman back. And Rodman picks up the foul as Ewing tries to protect himself and get the basket at the same time. And I tell you what, you tell me that Dennis Rodman is not on people's mind. This replay shows it right here. Patrick Ewing sees Dennis Rodman on the corner of his eye. Most of the time, he would have just gone straight up and tried to dunk the ball. Instead, he was trying to protect himself and draw a foul. And I don't think Dennis Rodman fouled him. I think Patrick Ewing tried to draw the foul and nothing happened. And the refs anticipated what Dennis might do, and so did Patrick Ewing. Now Rodman is called for the foul. Ewing gets the first of the two free throws. What's a body to do? Try piercing. Danny Ainge in his second year as head coach. Phoenix, six players averaging better than 10 points. They have a tie for the fifth best record in the NBA, and they lead the league with nearly 25 assists per game. Danny Ainge got back into coaching, said the low point of his career was when he was traded from Boston for Joe Klein. <laughs> well, the return of favor when he took over, he traded Joe Klein. I'll tell you what, Danny Ainge is doing just a wonderful job. You look at that basketball team, you know, how do you scout them? You don't know who's going to start from night to night. You don't know if they're going to play small ball or tall ball. They're doing everything. Yeah, there was no O for this season. No. Remember last year they got off to an 0 and 13 start. And so much is made about X and O's. I think if you can get a guy to get his team to play hard, you're doing pretty well. And that's what Danny Ainge is doing. They play hard. Ewing can't find that one. And Chicago clears. Rodman gives it back to Ron Harper. There's Ewing underneath. And Allen Houston, Charlie Ward finally comes out with it. Three on three. Mills. Nice play. Yeah, the Knicks are starting to get quick baskets, and you can feel them trying to creep back into this game. 
They do so with Charles Oakley on the bench with five fouls. They've got Allen Houston Ward. Underneath it goes, and a foul as Chris Mills makes contact with Longley. Watch Charlie Ward on the break. Yeah, and I think he's been the guy who has spearheaded this run by the Knicks. Every time it's him with the basketball, making the right pass. It's not a bad finish after all, too. Charlie Ward, four assists tonight to complement the nine points and five rebounds. And Longley is at the free throw line. That puts the plug in a 7 nothing run. See uh, Phil Jackson, the Tex winner, Jimmy Rogers, talking with Tony Kukoc. I tell you what, you look at the teams, Phil Jackson has his team at 11-7, they're playing well. Uh, Pat Riley's done a wonderful job without Alonzo Mourning. And in Houston, no one's talking about the Houston Rockets right now. They've played great. I think they've won eight in a row now without Elijah Wan. And some of those wins were also without Barkley. Allen Houston takes Jordan off the dribble and draws contact underneath. Foul is on Michael Jordan, his second. Boy, that's a that's a scare too for you, right there. When he start looking at you, I might have to give him a tech also. <laughs> and let's check in with Brian Burwell. Vern, what do you do when you're a coach and you're in complete control of the ball game? Phil Jackson, during that last timeout, yelled at his players for sitting down in the timeout. It's a great thing, and there's no word yet on whether they're going to file any grievance for verbal abuse. <laughs> oh. Well, the reason he, he yelled at them because he wanted to sit back down. <laughs> I'd never see him up. He's pretty good. Lead is 12. Longley, Jordan. And Allen Houston trying to defend. Ewing comes to help. That leaves Longley open. Short shot, but Harper's there. And Ewing. Harper. Whoa, my goodness. Wow. And that should never happen. Patrick Ewing and Ron Harper fighting over the ball. Ewing should come up with that every time. Charlie Warren for three. Got it. He's keeping them in this game. And I think the Knicks are very close to really cutting into this lead. Lead is 11 to 59, 48. I wouldn't be surprised to see Michael Jordan try to take this game over. Longley. That one to Buck Williams. It's two on three, and Mills hustles into the paint, and it's the runner. Yeah, Bill Jackson, as much as he sits down, if this keeps up, he'll be standing soon, and you can see the Knicks bench starting to really get into this game. The lead has been cut to nine. Fast break points now, 14 to four for New York. Jordan looks for Longley. Back to Kukoc. Chris Mills and Longley over Ewing. Got it. Five twenty to go, third quarter of play. Saved as Houston let it go and Mills picks it up. Buck Williams drives on Rodman. Rodman with the foul. Well, that got Bill Jackson up, I'll tell you that. Wow. Four fouls on Rodman. I'll tell you what, he does this very well, Dennis Rodman. And I don't know which way that should have gone. That's a tough call to make. He's awful good, I tell you that. Dennis Rodman is awful good at it. Rodman stays on the floor with four. Charlie Ward, stutter dribble. Mills for three. Got it. Everything has been off of Charlie Ward. He's setting up everybody right now and making shots. Mills, three of three in the quarter. The lead is eight. Back it comes to Jordan, way off the mark. Kukoc gets the rebound and puts up the shot for three. Oh, that's a killer. That is a killer. Four for four from three-point range tonight for Kukoc. Ward at the other end, no. Rebound Harper. 
Mills has him. Kukoc spots up for three right side. Instead, Jordan has it and is fouled. Watch the killer from Kukoc. Yeah, second shot by Michael Jordan. Kukoc picks it up, and watch, they leave him alone. You can't leave him alone. That is way too easy. Chicago with 12 second chance points tonight. Here's Jordan at the line. Well, that's another thing Jeff Van Gundy said. He said, we are a great defensive rebounding team. But we are an awful offensive rebounding team. And we should be better in that department. And that goes back to the emotion and the emotional level that you have to play at. Dennis Robbins a great offensive rebounder because Dennis Robbins plays with so much energy. Jordan rattles the second one in. He is now perfect from the free throw line tonight. So much for problems at the charity line. And the lead is back to 13. Had been cut to eight. And another turnover. Here's Jordan. That's called big hands and great talent. Very few people could have made that move. Still aesthetically pleasing, isn't it? This is some of the league's biggest names this year. Shaquille O'Neal, for example, out on the bench, and what a job Elvin Campbell has done for the Lakers. Akeem may be sidelined till the All-Star break. Kevin Willis has come through in a big way for Houston. Alonzo Mourning may be close to getting back, but in the meantime, how about the season being put out by Ike Austin? And in Utah, John Stockton returned last night, but in his absence, Howard Isley. Averaging almost 11 points. Scotty Pippen, of course, in civvies with an injury to at least until January. Tony Kukoc with 15 points tonight, including a perfect four for four. And during the break, well, a moments ago, uh, again, look at this. Charlie Ward leaves him. No one guards him. And Tony Kukoc, the fill-in, on fire. You know, there's a six-man award. I think we should come up with a fill-in award, and Ike Austin or Kevin Willis would win that award. 45 seconds, seven points. Punctuated by the Michael Jordan left-handed layup a moment ago. Back to a 15-point margin. Yuri. Underneath, Longley with the block. Loose ball off Randy Brown. Boy, that was a great block by Luke Long because Allen Houston was going to dunk that basketball. The pass from Ewing. Now watch this. Allen Houston's dunking this. Great recovery by Long. And a missed shot rebound to Ewing. Foul of Ron Harper. His first. Patrick Ewing back to the line. Ewing. Tough shooting night, four of eight from the free throw line. And not helped by a three for 15 effort from the field. John Starks back in the floor now for New York. And he will replace Allen Houston. And every time the Knicks have had a chance to get back in the game, someone's made a big shot. And that three-point shot we showed by Tony Kukoc was a killer. That cuts the margin to 13, 320 to go in the third quarter of play. Longley gets it off to Randy Brown. Charlie Ward. Face off. And, goes up and, over. and that's another fill-in because he had the fill-in for Steve Kerr and he's showing that he can play basketball also. What it shows is how talented this league is and when you give a guy an opportunity, we find out that there's a lot of good basketball players. Starks misses, Rodman rebounds. That's eight rebounds tonight for Rodman. He has been in double figures rebounding in the last 11 consecutive games, averaging 13 for the year. Starks. Taken away, Randy Brown, wow. He will go to the free throw line. Tell you what, he is some athlete himself. I mean, look at Randy Brown here. Look at this shot. This is some athletic move. He is really explosive going to the basket. And now Randy Brown at the free throw line. You 
talk about the little guys the teams pick up to win championships. And no, I'm not saying that management wins titles. It's the players. <laughs> I'm saying that right now. But that little move of getting Randy Brown in here, bringing Bill Winnington, even going out and getting Tony Kukoc, helped this basketball team. No one wanted to take a chance on Dennis Robin except for the Bulls. And they won two titles with them on the court. And they lead right now by 17. First of four regular season meetings between these two. And this call against Randy Brown. Bill Jackson closing in on win number 500. He comes in tonight having captured 494. If the Bulls win seven of the next ten, including tonight, Jackson will get to 500 faster than anybody. Current mark held by Patrick Riley. Childs gets another. And that's where the Nick Chicago Love Fest started. Yes. <laughs> With Pat Riley and Phil Jackson. And Phil Jackson was then playing the role of Jeff Van Gundy. Now things have changed and Jackson's on top. So Jeff Van Gundy is the guy who throws the little lines. Yeah, he's not shy about doing that either. He no. gets inside Jackson's head. Here's Kukos underneath. And a foul called the long way to get the free throw line. Well, you're right. He does get inside of Jackson's head. And Jackson used to get inside Riley's, Riley's head. head. Right. I remember playing in the game, and, and Jackson was making comments about the time is ticking and the Knicks are getting too old. And we had a practice, and it wasn't even against the Bulls the next game, and Riley missed, mentioned Jackson's name about ten times. <laughs> Rodman will... Head out. Let's check in with Brian Burwell. You know, Bernie, it has been a very difficult year for the Bulls in terms of injuries, and, and it even reaches down to the general manager. Jerry Krause is suffering from bronchitis, and today he was coughing so hard, he told me he threw his back out. He's around here limping somewhere. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Two minutes to go, he said, getting back to the play. Giles. Allen Houston is fouled. New coach picks up his first. And you can see what Jeff Van Gundy is going to do now. He's taking Patrick Ewing out, and he's going to try to open the court and try to get dribble penetration. He's going to go real small. He has three guards on the court right now with Buck Williams and Dudley. I see Mills coming in. And he will replace Buck Williams. Buck Williams. So he's going to go real small. And you can see the game being played now because Steve Kerr is coming in for Dennis Rodman. And I can guarantee you Steve Kerr has not substituted for, for Dennis Rodman very often. I don't think Rodman likes it. No, because Rodman is saying, forget what they're doing. <laughs> Let's play our way. Houston gets the free throw, 74 58, 150 to go, third quarter. Largest lead of this quarter was 19. New York put together a run led by Charlie Ward. They got into it eight points and a three-pointer from Kukoc and a left-handed layup from Jordan. Seven-nothing run for Chicago in a 45-second span. This one is called on Chris Dudley. And Kukoc back to the free throw line. Chicago struggling, last in the league at the free throw line this year. We've uh, talked about that a lot, but tonight they have now hit 18 in a row. Knew it. I knew it. It's amazing. It is amazing. All you have to do is mention it. But I've always said when you mention it with a good player, he might miss it. When you miss it with a guy who can't shoot, they always miss it. <laughs> Good coach misses two. Ball on the court. Houston gets it. 74-58. Allen Houston guarded by Ron Harper. You can see the open court. Here's Starks. Kerr has him. 
Chris Mills comes inside of Pete Coach. Tim Dudley back to Childs. 64 seconds to go in the quarter. Houston. And Bill Lennington picks up the foul. That's going to send Chris Dudley to the line, which is always an adventure. Look at this. He's improved this year. Yeah. And it's amazing because when you see him shoot him, though I will say his technique is better. Michael Jordan and Scotty Pippen. <laughs> I think. And I think that's neat right there. Michael Jordan, Scotty Pippen, and Tony Cook coach sitting next to each other and talking. That's something that wouldn't have happened two or three years ago. I think they all really get along, especially Pippen and Cook coach. Scotty Pippen was serenaded by the crowd here with chance of Scotty, 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 and we want Pippen. When they played at home against Milwaukee the other night, I wouldn't be surprised if we heard something along those lines if this trend continues. Well, they're going to need to do something, the fans. <laughs> yes. 74-58. Mills. There too. You keep hearing that Pippen wants to be traded. We watched him coaching a guy. We've watched him cheering. That doesn't look like a guy who wants to be traded to me. Randy Brown at the other end. Judd Bushler has made his first appearance in the game tonight and gets the ball from Steve Kerr. Three on the shot clock. Wennington. And here comes... John Starks for the Knicks. Take it back outside. Runner, nope. Well, Patrick Ewing struggling tonight. 12 points, but three of 15 from the field. The Knicks carved into a 19-point lead. They cut it to eight, but as we finish three, Chicago's lead is back to 14. Welcome back to the United Center, Chicago. First meeting of the season, a holiday treat for you. The New York Knicks come to town and take on the Chicago Bulls, but Chicago having its way with the Knicks tonight, and they have really looked good in several areas where they've struggled so far this season. Doc. Yeah, they've struggled all season offensively, and you look at all the numbers are up, even free throw shooting, 83% to 66%. And you look at this team, the Bulls, and, and I said it earlier, they're great defensively right now, and you know they got help on the way when Scottie Pippen comes back offensively and defensively. I think they're sitting pretty. We begin the final quarter. Vern Lundquist, Doc Rivers, and Brian Burwell. Ah! Dudley underneath. And, and they're even sending the right guys to the line right now, the Bulls. The last two times guys have gone to the foul line has been Chris Dudley. John Starks, I was talking to him today about Dudley. He loved him. He said, this guy is our effort player. He said he works on his game. He's improved free throw shooting wise on that right now. He said he's really going to pay dividends in the playoffs for us. He, I mean, he loves Dudley. They do need some help at the free throw line. Bangs that one home. Yes. <laughs> That's a good term. Bang is the opposite <laughs> word. Yes. 74-61. Kerr, Wennington, Randy Brown, Bushler, and Michael Jordan. On the floor for Chicago. Here's Judd Bushler. That one is uh, affected by the foul from Chris Mills. And Judd Bushler will go to the free throw line. And see, I don't think the, the Bulls are out of the woods yet. Uh, but every time the Knicks seem like they have a stop, they make a foul like that, they're given two more points. In the third quarter, 
New York 8 of 19 and Chicago 33 percent. Joey Crawford assuming command of this game. Yes, I thought he was directing traffic for a minute. I saw highlights of that traffic cop in Providence, Rhode Island today on the news. And that looked like Crawford dancing in the middle of the intersection. And Starks lets it go. Oh, boy. Now the crowd will give him what for. Oh, they don't like him anyway. So they're really enjoying this. The only guy who's not enjoying this is Jeff Van Gundy because the Bulls defense has been real good. But the Knicks offense has not. And they're just turning the ball over without pressure at times, like on that play right there. Bushnell guarded by Chris Mills. Dudley guards Wennington. He fronts him. Jordan cuts. Starks guards him. And out. Now clear out for Michael Jordan. Help comes from Mills. Dudley and Wennington will jump it. And look at these two warriors going at him. They've had a lot of games going up against each other. Now that's some banking, and I, I like when they allow that. And that's what forced Michael into taking the tough shot. Dudley steals the uh, tip, and here comes Chris Childs. Childs with the jumper, cans that one. Chicago in Orlando tomorrow night. They've got a back-to-back -back circumstance. They will leave immediately after the game. There's Dudley with the block. Here comes Starks, it's three on three. Starks kicks it out to Mills for three. Rebound, Jordan. Lead is 12, 10 and a half to go in regulation. Underneath, Wennington, look for Jordan, taken away by Mills. And this small lineup is affecting the ball. Giles brings it back. Dunkley wasn't ready for it. Yeah, and he shouldn't have made that pass. You got four scores on the floor, and you throw it to Chris Dudley. Spike Lee didn't like it either. But this is something Dudley can do. One of the better in the league at it. Well, gives them something that uh, was missing last year when Ewing sat. Yeah, when Ewing said everyone drove the basketball. Now when he sits, you still have to get it past Dudley. Kerr for three. That's his first miss of the season. Of course, he missed the last 10 games, but Steve Kerr was 7 of 7 in three-point range until that one, including one tonight. And I don't think that line matters to him at all. No. Bushler. And Ewing with a rebound. 75-63. Well, you can hear John Sarchio get something good. Wennington fouls. But once again, Bill Wennington is really fighting Patrick Ewing. I was surprised in our conversation with Jeff Van Gundy tonight that he pointed to Bill Wennington as one of the keys to this game. Not an obvious choice. No, it's not. He said Bill Wennington makes more shots against them because when they trap and lead Bill Wennington, he's a guy who can make that 15-foot jump shot like Horace Grant used to do with the Bulls when he played here. Horace Grant killed the Knicks because he would trap off of him or help off of him, and he could step up and make the jump shots. Ewing gets both free throws, a 9-1 to one New York run, and it's back to 10. Harper is back on the floor now. Bushler, Longley is back. Jordan calls for it. Chris Childs fronts Michael Jordan. They're really battling in the post. Well, they are going oh, at it. wow. And you knew a foul was going to be called. And Chris Childs, you know what he was doing? He knew he was getting away with something, but he was going to keep doing it until they called it. And if they were not going to call it, he, you should keep doing it. I mean, look at this down here. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, they are really going after it. And that was the end part. <laughs> That's right. 9-10 to go. Pick and roll, Longley, Harper, and the quick pass to uh, John Starks. Starks guarded by Kerr, and Kerr draws the foul. And the Knicks are back in this game. John Starks makes these two free throws. It's an eight-point game, and it started with small ball. 
Yeah, they went to the really tiny lineup. Yeah, they have two point guards in the game right now and a two guard. Chris Mills is a three, Patrick Ewing is a five, and Chris Mills came in. They they had four guards on the court because Allen Houston was on the court. Starks gets the first. Midway through quarter number three, as you look at Oakley, who sat down early in this half with his fifth foul. New York carved it down to eight. Then it went back to a 14-point margin. They could get it to eight here. Nope. And we might not see Oakley the rest of this game uh, with the way they're down. They need points, and they need quickness. Horsler gets it for Chicago. 75-66, 8.40 to go. Reach in foul. Patrick Ewing. That's his third. Harper will pull it in. Jordan and Childs again. Illegal defense called against New York. That was really smart. They were forcing Michael Jordan down to Patrick Ewing. Luke Longley cleared out, and they had to call the illegal defense. That was a smart play. That's the first illegal defensive call tonight. Jordan doesn't get the roll. Ewing gets the rebound. New York with a chance to get within seven. Kick it back outside. Starks for three. Get it out. Loose ball. Ewing. Tried to knock it off Longley, and Ewing goes flying. Here comes Jordan for Chicago. Underneath, Ron Harper. Got it. Ewing couldn't get back to help defensively. No, and every time the Knicks need a basket, Chicago stops and scores. The key in the last run was a three-pointer from Kukoc. On a second shot. Ewing. Over Longley, way over Longley. Yeah, and if he's going to take those shots, the Bulls are happy. Ewing is zero for six from the field in this half. Jordan. Michael's got 26. And that ends your run. Well, they got within eight in the third quarter. They get within nine in the fourth. Now they trail again by 13. Look on TNT, don't miss the live concert event that will make history. Watch Rod Stewart, Celine Dion, Mariah Carey, and many more in a gift of song. And while that's going on on TNT, over on TBS, our sister station, the Los Angeles Lakers go in to take on the Golden State Warriors, followed by Inside the NBA. That's tomorrow night at 8 o'clock on TBS. Well, a moment ago, Patrick Ewing found himself in photographer's row. Well, the good part about this is the effort. The bad part of this is the photographer's taking him out of the play, and the result, no shot blocker, Ron Harper lays it in. Now, Patrick, trying to get a clarification from Scott Wall. Charles Oakley back in the game now. He has not played... Uh, much since two minutes into the half. Yeah, and he's gone away from small ball right now past Jeff Van Gundy, though he still has three guards in. Starks and underneath, he's in. and Ewing with the tip of Oakley's miss. Yeah, and what has happened is that Jeff Van Gundy caught him off guard, caught Phil Jackson. Right now, they have a four, and Jeff Boosler is guarding Charles Oakley. Oakley's gonna have a fun time on the board. Jordan. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, you, you can look at this. <laughs> and, uh, he's going to make sure that they keep control of the game. And here comes Dennis Rodman. For Bushler. For Bushler. But Jeff Van Gundy got it away with it for one play. That's it. And the happiest guy in the building was Bushler to come out. He didn't want any of Oakley either. Michael Jordan, 29 points tonight, which is two above his seasonal average. And he makes amends for a tough night he had against Milwaukee with 13. 
back yeah, I think if Michael Jordan is, is struggling, just bring the Knicks in, and that'll make him play real well. <laughs> he loves them. By the way, this is the, they're going to have their 500th consecutive sellout here against Phoenix on December 15th. They have the current sellout record since Sacramento had uh, their streak end earlier this year. Watch Ewing a moment ago. Yeah, you can see Ewing really trying to just get the basketball and get shots. Again, catching it way out of the paint. But when he gets in like that, he's really good. Steve Kerr picked up by Charlie Ward. Starks, Jordan, has it go off his foot. Chris Childs, nice adjustment with the ball in the air and two more. Yeah, and again, back to 10. The Knicks won't go away, but every time they have a chance to cut into it, somebody makes a big play for Chicago. Kerr. And Jordan. Starks will have him. Childs guards Harper. Ewing on Longley. And Rodman and Oakley will do battle as they have so many times. Harper. Rodman with a rebound. That's double digit rebound. That's 10. The three pointer is hit. Longley misses with the putback, but is fouled in the attempt. Yeah, Patrick Ewing's going to get a take. Because uh, he feels he was put. He's talked to all three of the officials and none have responded. And Longley goes to the free throw line. Take a look at it. Well, you'll see Patrick Ewing at the bottom of your scheme. Oh, I don't know if that was more of a flop than a push. And that's why it wasn't called. That's more frustration because he thought he had a good flop. Are you still critiquing flops? Yes. And that was a two. Okay. Not not not, good. not very good. Lead is 12. Because if they don't call it, it's not good. New coach getting ready to come back to Chicago. Here's Ewing. Offensive board. No, he starts, but he was too far underneath. Yeah, and he was too far underneath because Michael Jordan put him under there <laughs> with great defense. Starks on Jordan, Rodman and Oakley, and this time it's going to be Rodman. He was caught. You'll see him. He's trying to get to Oakley by doing little things, flopping right there, and that time he was caught. You can see them. They've been going at it all day. Look at this, Rodman. Oh, wow. Oh. Five fouls on Rodman, 5-12 to play in the game, a 12-point margin for Chicago. Starks. Rebound, Harper. Tony Kukoc back on with Kerr, Longley, Jordan, and Harper now. Starks is 2 of 11 for the night. Houston getting set to come back. Here's Kerr. Kicks it out to Morley. Every time, there's an answer from Chicago. Ewing. And Charlie Ward. But you look at their passes. No one catches them. Uh, they're off the mark. Everything is out of sync right now for the Knicks. That's not but that was out of desperation. Patrick Ewing gets the basket and goes to the free throw line. I mean, everything is out of sync, and that was out of desperation. He had to put the ball on the floor, drives to the basket, and he makes it. Foul was on Jordan, his fourth. In this quarter, New York 5 of 14. Chicago also in the 33% range. Well, it doesn't matter to them yeah. because they have the big lead. Stark sits down, 2 of 11 for the night, 86-75. Patrick Ewing scoreless from the field in the third quarter, has nine points in this quarter. Long lead of Kukoc. Four on the shot clock. Boy. 
Five for five for Tony Kukoc tonight. He's got 17 points. Alan Houston. Ewing with a rebound. Back to Ward. And Chris Childs for three. Blocked by Harper. Oakley. And Longley fouls him. At the shot clock buzzer, watch Kukoc. I mean, this is a five going, or a four going up against the three. Tony Kukoc being the three. That's great defense. That's better offense. Can't complain with Oakley's defense on that last play. Oakley shoots one more. You can see the flashes of Tony Kukoc at times. Uh, we've seen him get hot last year against the Lakers in that overtime game. He just took the game over. So you know it's there. and You know it must be extremely frustrating because he's really never shown it in the NBA on a consistent basis, though he did get the uh, Sixth Man of the Year award once. Scotty Pippen chatting with Randy Brown on the bench. And hopefully one of two as Jordan gets the rebound. Chicago goes on the road. They're at Orlando, then at Charlotte, before getting back here against Toronto. Kerr, 90-76. Amazing what outside shooting will do for your basketball team. Childs, jumper. Ewing keeps it alive and gets it back to Allen Houston. Now Charlie Ward. That's for three. And Childs and Jordan get it to it. Yeah, they've been going at it all game. Michael Jordan is a smart guy. He was about to throw a point punch, Michael Jordan. He ran back and stopped himself. That's really tough to do when you're that emotional. He was going to throw a punch and stop. And Giles has been ejected. Jeff Van Gundy out to counsel with him. And he's going to walk him. Yeah, Van Gundy's. Now Don Cheney comes out to help with Chris Child. And Child is hot because both of them aren't going, just he is going. Take a look at it, Childs in the right corner. And you can see Michael Jordan back there. And that's what he got upset. He's saying Michael Jordan threw an elbow. He throws the ball at him. That's frustration for being down. That was the second technical tonight called on Chris Childs, the yeah. ejection. And the technical was also called on Michael Jordan. So a double technical. The reason for the ejection again was the second technical of the night called on Chris Childs. Well, while things calm down here at the United Center, we'll take a break. 2.52 to go. 979. Doc, another look at this battle with Jordan and Chris Childs. Well, you can see them both circled here. Now, watch what happens, and this is why Chris Childs gets upset. You can see the little elbow at the bottom of the screen, and you can see Michael Jordan charging Childs. I thought Jordan was going to throw a punch, and he didn't. He controlled himself. It's a better angle at it down here. Look at this right here. You see the elbow to the head, to the back of the head, and you see Childs get upset. Both guys thought about throwing. Neither one did. I think both guys should be commended for controlling their emotions in an emotional game. And again, the reason for the ejection for Childs was uh, the acquisition of his second technical yeah. of the night. 90-79, 2.46 to go. Kerr, Harper, Jordan. Two coach. And long run. Four on the shot clock. New coach, perfect for the night. And he cans another one as the shot clock winds down. I tell you what, that was great because Michael Jordan was in the post and he wanted the ball. He's upset at that last play. He wanted the basketball. Tony Kukoc told him to clear out because he had a better option. And after the shot, Michael Jordan goes up to him and congratulates him and said you were right. 
Kukoc, six for six from the field and four of six from the free throw line. Patrick Ewing. And this foul is going to be called on Longley, which will send Ewing back to the line. What's amazing to me watching this game is how the Knicks are playing the last eight minutes. They're cutting. They're running hard. And I know Jeff Van Gundy is saying, what about the first, second, and third quarter? Why didn't we do it then? It is a mystery. And they were not playing with much enthusiasm in those first three quarters. Ewing with 10 in this quarter. Rebound Oakley. Here, Starks. He can't buy a basketball no. night. And that wasn't even close. Sometimes John gets so into the game that he takes himself out of the game. It's a Zen thing. We're finding sacred hoops. Yes. <laughs> this basket good. And Jordan and Kukoc have an amiable chat. Yeah, I mean, that's just great play by Tony Kukos, who's having himself one terrific game. Longley goes back to the free throw line. I mean, this is done against the first team off, uh, defensively in the league. Chicago's doing this, and they're scoring, in my opinion, relatively easy. They're getting every shot that they want. Well, they're shooting 45% from the field tonight. And the Knicks are holding teams to 39%. New York in the meantime miserable again they were 35 percent of the loss here's Allen Houston gets two in that loss at Philadelphia but there are 36 percent from the field tonight he was at 14. Michael Jordan with 29 points lead the way and in their 151st regular season meeting Chicago's going to go up on the series. That's a shot clock violation. 76 games to 75. Don't forget EJ and Reggie with inside the NBA. Lots of key games at the quarter pole here early in the season. Patrick Ewing dunk for the night. 96-82 is the score. That's the ball to Oakley. And the Knicks back home for three in a row now. They go back to uh, the Garden to take on Minnesota Thursday. Rematch with Philadelphia on Saturday. Doc and I will be there on Tuesday night as Detroit comes to town. And boy, it looked like Kerr sprained his ankle or something on that last play. <laughs> you can see Kerr here. Yeah, he just landed wrong. Michael Jordan will rest. 29 points for the night. And Steve Kerr at the free throw line. Yeah, Michael Jordan's going straight to the locker room. He whispered something to the trainer, and they're taking him back. I don't think he's injured or anything. I think he just wants to ice whatever is ailing him. Kerr makes it a 16-point margin with 65 seconds to go. On to Orlando for Chicago. They will have won their fourth in a row for the first time this season. Here is Harper chasing down the loose ball in the corner. And they uh, have a chance now to go to 100 points for only the third time, fourth time this season. And they, would, they love doing it against the Knicks. They're very happy about that if they can. Harper, scoop shot. They did not get it then, but the free throws will be coming. I tell you, Jeff Van Gundy thought that they were struggling against bad teams. Now tonight, they play a good team, and the struggle continues. So I think this game has a lot of meaning, not because they lost to the Bulls, but because they've been playing on and off against good and bad. But this is a good team, and they lost pretty handedly. I, actually, I thought the game was never threatened. It was never close. Not after the first quarter tonight. Larry Johnson expected back next week. And here's Ron Harper. Gets the first. One more. 
You know, Van Gundy was telling us this morning, uh, I mentioned the word talent. He said, I hate that word. It's just like potential. Everyone talks about our talent, and he said, potential and talent are bad. They're bad words in the NBA. That means you're nothing. 18-point margin right now, so they will lose by double digits tonight. Kick it out into the corner. And Steve Kerr comes down with it for Chicago. They lost by 15 to Philadelphia on the road, to 14 to Dallas on the road in San Antonio by six. Bushler in and out, tip back to Bushler. And the Chicago Bulls are gonna send their record to 12 and seven. They win their fourth in a row. They take the first round of four in the series against the New York Knicks, and Phil Jackson has won his 495th game. Chicago wins at 182, and let's check in with Brian Burwell. And I'm standing here with the man who was perfect tonight, Tony Kukoc, you didn't miss a shot. What is it about this team that brings out the best in the Chicago Bulls? Well, it's a long time rivalry in between the Knicks and the Bulls. And uh, it doesn't matter how they uh, standing in a conference, every time it's going to be a big game. It was the same thing tonight. Uh, we came ready to play a game, and uh, we won it. This is the kind of offense that this team needs to get. You know, I noticed late in the game, you waved Michael off. He wanted the ball, and you waved him off, and you took the shot. What did he say to you afterwards? Uh, he, he said, uh, good call. He said a good call, but uh, I mean, uh, sometimes uh, when the other guys have the, the advantage in the offense, uh, I think uh, we have to take that, uh, and uh, it worked tonight. Is this the kind of performance that they need from you on a daily basis uh, in absence of uh, Scotty Pippen? Well, uh, we'll be good. Good if I can be 100% perfect. Of the, but, uh, that can't happen. But I mean, uh, in, in the absence of Scotty, everybody has to step up and everybody has to play 100%. If uh, we want to keep uh, winning and playing good. All right. Thank you very much, Tony. And one final thing, Vern. Michael Jordan did fell down late in the game, and he hurt the his his index. No, yeah, yeah, that's his index finger. That's right. He hurt his index finger, and he went into the locker room to get some treatment. We'll find out if there's anything more later on. Back to you, Vern. Okay, Brian. Thank you. 182, the final. Tony Kukoc been selected as our butt player of the game tonight. Perfect from the field.